as I think I told you a week ago, my great addiction is soccer. Well, when I came from Ireland in 1966 to New Jersey, I took an interest in sports for the reason I could communicate with the younger generation. And I remember there was a famous football team called the Green Bay Packers. Anybody here from Green Bay? No. No. <laughs> All right. It's too cold. And famous coach called Vince Lombardi, who was a graduate of Fordham University. And they had a famous quarterback called Bart Starr. But they had another player who excelled not only on the field, but off the field. And his name was Jerry Kramer. He was a great running back. But he also wrote a famous book called Instant Replay. And in this instant replay, he talks about all the things that go on behind the seals, players, their motivations, all of these things. And then he went on to say that he had seen a movie called Cool Hand Luke. Remember that movie? The great Paul Newman. That's right, yes. Well, he's a very wild character in this movie. And he doesn't care about God or man. He's in prison. And eventually he escapes and he's on the run. And he comes to a church. He goes in, it's empty. But he kneels down and he begins to pray to his God. And this is what he says. Old man, what do you, well, sorry, what do you got planned for me? What do you have in mind when you made me? What did you put, uh, put me on earth for, old man? That was his prayer. And then Jerry Kramer goes on to say, I ask the same questions. What's my purpose here on earth? Besides playing the silly game I play every Sunday, I feel there's got to be more to life than that. There's got to be some reason for it. I didn't come up with any answer. I just thought about it for a while. What's my life all about? 20 years later, 20 years later he wrote another book called Distant Replay. And there is one chapter in that that says, ask the question, what have I done with my life? It's a good question. What have I done with my life? And he tells the story that the latest book he has read, it's a famous book, by the way, and it's all about people who were declared clinically dead, but were resuscitated. And I've met people who had experienced that life-death experience. And he goes on to say, one of the people recalled floating up and encountering a being of light that somehow non-verbally asked, what have you done with your life? I remember, he says, putting down the book and asking myself that same question. Then I answered it by listing my possessions, my ranch in Idaho, my cars, my boat. Suddenly I stopped and said to myself, isn't that wonderful? And he says, when I was playing with the Packers, I thought I would live forever. But now, as the years go by, I think more and more about my death. And that's what today's scripture is all about. It's about priorities. Priorities in our life. What is the most important thing in my life? What is the most important thing in your life? 
And sometimes we can find the answer. <laughs> Excuse me. I meet some high school kid, and I say to him, what's the most important thing in your father's life? And the kid will say, the most important thing in my father's life is his family. Or the kid may say, the most important thing in my father's life is his business. Or I talk to the daughter and I say to the daughter, what is the most important thing in your mother's life? And the kid replies, I really don't know what is the most important thing in my mother's life, but I know one thing. It's not her family. You see, priorities, priorities. This poor slob in the gospel, he has a severe disease called affluenza. All he thinks is amassing property and possessions and money. That's all he thinks of. He doesn't realize what's going to happen to all of this stuff. What's going to happen? He can't take it with you. You know that old proverb, there are no pockets in shrouds. And in some communities, when a person dies, before they bury the person, they strip the person naked. Why? Because this person came into the world naked and will go out of the world naked. Every one of us. What does it profit a man if he gained the entire world and loses his soul in the process? A great, very man once, is the way it was Alfred Nobel, born and reared in France. And he was a very public figure. And then one morning, he's reading the morning paper, as he did every day of his life. He's a businessman. And what happens? His obituary is in the paper. The paper had, had made a terrible mistake. Instead, he put in the obituary of his brother. They put his obituary. And he was shocked by what he read there. It described him as the dynamite king, a man who was building instruments that brought death and destruction with his dynamite. He was in total shock. And he decided, I have to do something about this. And so he established the Nobel Prizes, which are distributed every day, year from Stockholm in Sweden, for chemistry, literature, medicine, and peace. Every year, these prizes are awarded to various people in the world. It changed his life forever. So this evening, scripture is asking us to look at our own lives, to see our own obituary and what is in that obituary, to see ourselves as other people see us, but most importantly of all, to see ourselves as God sees us, as God sees us. That is the critical question. And I hope that when I appear before God and I have to give an account of my life and my stewardship, I certainly don't want to hear what the man in the gospel heard, what he appeared before God. You fool. You fool. What eternal indictment that would be that we went through life and we, met, we forgot what it was really all about. That we were so caught, caught up in the things of the world that we forgot what life was truly about. 
there is sufficient food for all of us this evening to reflect upon our lives, to see ourselves as others see us, but more importantly, to see ourselves as God sees us. Life is very unpredictable. We live from second to second. I had a funeral on Thursday. I had a funeral this morning, and I have a funeral on Monday. That's how unpredictable life is. We never know when God is going to call us. And so the importance of listening to this evening's gospel and listening to the message to be always prepared to meet our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ.